So good morning to everybody. And uh, let me say a sincere word of thank you to Marco Rodzinek and uh, Alexander Watson and uh, Monica Lugo for working hard to having me here. I will, um, I will talk about the long-term project uh, Fragments of Extinction, which is a cross-disciplinary project between science and art. Uh, before starting, let me play you a sound excerpt. Isn't that hard to believe that this is just a natural, pure, single recording? You've heard the, all the layering of species within this Amazon soundscape, night soundscape. So 30,000 species are possibly going extinct every year. At this exponentially growing rate, one half of our life forms will be extinct by the end of the century. The last IUCN red list data on, of threatened species says that one-eighth of birds, one-fourth of mammals, one-third of coral reefs, 41% of amphibians, and 62% of cichlids plants entered the red list of extinction, face extinction, right now. In populations, that is, numbers of individuals that uh, monitored since 1970s have decreased by 69%. So this means that two-thirds of uh, uh, wildlife, wildlife mass in the planet has disappeared in just 50 years. Uh, we've done much to protect forests and biodiversity, but not enough. Today, even in the strictly protected areas, with the silent force of climate change, potentially all undisturbed ecosystems are subjected to the damage of their species composition. Thus, their original acoustic integrity. This is an important word. Uh, the aim of the project is to collect the sound of these ecosystems in very specific areas. In this animation, you see the original tropical rainforest extent and what's left intact today. Within the equatorial belt, the project works in primary forests, which are lowland, highest in biodiversity, and currently completely undisturbed. Enlarging the Amazon basin, you, you can see where we worked, but I'll show you afterwards. So fragments of extinction is calling for urgent 24-hour 3D sound samples of the voice of evolution. For archiving it as a digital repository of paleo megadiverse soundscapes to pass on to future generations, as an intangible heritage of nature, we don't, we don't value the intangibility of the processes in nature. And there's a time machine for future ecoacoustic reference. And also for outreaching, uh, recording are available for 3D listening in present days as immersive experiential learning and as science dissemination in museums and public venues. Why these areas? They are the most diverse ecosystems on Earth. At the equator, circadian cycles are regular and uniform. The most complex and fragile ecosystems with many extinctions going on right now. Why the soundscape? The order and equilibrium of these habitats is incredibly clear in their acoustic behavior. They are poorly studied in prints of ecosystems, and they are quickly decomposing, as we know. So the project workflow is uh, Fieldwork in the tropics, of course, data analysis, dissemination of findings, of scientific findings, and at the same time, post-production in dedicated three-dimensional studios for being ready for installation in museums and the Sonosfera, which is a theater I'll show you afterwards. These are some of the recording campaign we, and campaigns we've done since 1998 
So it's about 25 years of recordings. This, let me show you some images. This is Africa, an autonomous system there. And um, this is Borneo. Uh, it's important to work at different gradients in the forest to collect uh, the different biology. The canopy level and the floor level are very different. This is an important image as well that shows you how we choose our areas. This is possibly the highest biodiversity in the planet. The gamma diversity and the alpha diversity are very high in, in that area. So we prioritize that in the Yasuni. Natives are very important to penetrate the forest, to, to go in, 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 in the place where are actually secrets for them. They know where to go to record the original imprint of, uh, of nature. Uh, this is a recording system. As you've seen, this is a recording, uh, this is a base camp, this is the recording station. Microphones are usually placed at uh, 100 meters, you know, in order to not disturb what we're recording, even if we are doing supervised recording, not unsupervised, because this technology is not made for, <laughs> for being left there, it's too complicated. You can see we record all the uh, day through, these are night recordings, as you can see. The next field recording campaign will be done in Sumatra and West Papua. These are just uh, <laughs> an image that shows you the amount of technology we bring in a single recording station for different field recording approaches. Nowadays, we only use space preservative approach, which means recording the entire spherical information of a habitat and storing the spatial information of that. I'll show you afterwards. Uh, what comes out? A 24-hour continuous recording carried out with that technology, 64 microphones at the same time in 64 tracks, with high definition and high quantization means one terabyte each single day. From a soundscape analysis point of view, you can see something here. Um, I don't know if you know how to read a spectrogram. Those spectrograms are very important in bioacoustics and in ecoacoustics. In the vertical axis, you have uh, frequency. In the horizontal axis, you have time. The present is at the, at the far right here. And the, the color is acoustic energy. So you can see how this soundscape, can you raise the level, how this soundscape is actually depicting a real tapestry where every species has his own space, frequency space, okay? So this is exactly a, a multiplexing. Evolution discovered multiplexing in order to uh, let uh, so many species sharing the same acoustic environment. So you can see 11 species of insects here. This is Borneo. And there are some frogs as well here. Okay, at a sp we don't arrive at a species level for insects. We don't know who is doing what. We arrive at a species level with amphibians and birds, but we don't know nothing, almost nothing about insects, which are the main sounds of that. So, uh, other examples of uh, temporal niches, in this case, tree frogs wait for their moment to insert their vocalization when the cicada are still. This is a very elegant niche segregation frequency niches segregation in Borneo of eight species of insects. If you put a staff there, an octave, just an octave, you look at that, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a good metaphor. So in order to let people enter the fragile beauty and equilibrium of these natural soundscapes, a specific space was required, a space that could preserve the 3D sonic characteristics of the recording habitat, Direction, distance, perspective, and dim dimension of each sound gesture. This theater, go back, this theater has 45 loudspeakers on a sphere, and uh, we've built uh, several of them already. There's an international patent, it's scalable, and uh, this is the one in my institution, which is also a recording studio for the project, uh, a post-production studio, actually. This is the first mobile prototype 
This is the first theater large scale in Denmark in the Museum of Natural History. And finally, we get to the Sonosphere, I'm almost done, um, uh, which was built in 2019 for 60 people with the president of the EU parliament, David Sassoli, which opened that. And the Sonosphere has immersive education and creative programs inside. We have to scale up this project now. We have to build more Sonosfera theaters, uh, more and uh, very quick trips in the habitats that we have discovered are important to, to, to preserve. And we have to build also a virtual space in the metaverse. Thank you very much.